All right, Matt, again, that was the great guard perspective of that. When you hear what he's saying, and you've been at so many games and situations where they're up big, Juwan Howard has at least one starter on the court down double digits. So, again, what do you make of Greg Gard's comments? I mean, to me, this is, this is, you know, this is ego at play here. Greg Gard's got his backups in, the walk-ons in. The game is decided. It's in, it's in Michigan's right if it wants to press. Sure. There's an unspoken rule, like when the game is done, you're not pressing. But Michigan wanted to continue to press. That's fine. You can do that. Greg Gard can then call timeout if he does not want to have his players get embarrassed going up against Michigan. Again, these are not. this is not the starting five on the floor there. So it's in Michigan's right if it wants to press in that spot when there is no chance at winning the game. And it is in Wisconsin's right to call a timeout to reset again. He wanted to reset the clock so they could get the ball across the floor, not have a t not have a turnover. If you want to argue about whether or not it matters if Wisconsin had a turnover, he didn't want to embarrass his guys. And so then Howard gets angry at that, and then that's why you have this in the post-game handshake line. Uh, if you want to say we should get a ri we should get rid of this practice, by the way, I'm fine with it. In the pandemic era, as an oh by the way. The handshake line has been a sometimes yes, sometimes no kind of happening thing across men's college basketball. There have been random uh, occasional calls over the past, you know, 5, 10, 15 years for the sport to do away with this practice and have it, you know, some think it's kind of phony uh, sportsmanship to end a game. You would have less of this if we never did it, that's for sure. This would not happen if there weren't handshake lines. It wouldn't because, you know, these are it's, it is such a highly competitive sport. Michigan's trying to play just to keep itself in the NCAA tournament conversation. It's one of the most disappointing teams in the sport this season. And then when you're forcing, you know, coaches and players to have, you know, face-to-face -face encounters after two hours of really intense competition, occasionally this stuff, I don't want to say it, should, it shouldn't be inevitable, but it is. Like, we just get a scene like this every so often across college basketball. A lot of times this will actually happen Tommy at the lower levels on a game that's not on national television, so you don't really see it. But something like this happens, you know, more than 5,000 games in a season. It's rare, but it happens. And doesn't mean there's any excuse for it. There clearly isn't. I mean, look at this. You see lit punches thrown on both sides here. Wisconsin and Michigan cannot have it. This is going to stain Juwan Howard's reputation for a long time. I mean, this, is be this becomes the most infamous image tied to Jawan Howard's coach, coaching career at this point. Undeniably, undeniably. He's got to be held to a higher standard. Uh, I'm sure he knows in the immediate aftermath. I'm sure he has some humongous regrets over this, as he should. You cannot do this. You have straight up assault in the post-game handshake line. Greg Gar laid it out on CBS as to why he thought that situation escalated the way it did. But then, you know, the adults have to set they got to set the tone. They have to set the example for their players. Juwan Howard made it physical. And then the players, once it got heated and you've got, you know, who knows how many bodies in that scrum, 25, 30, 35, 40. Yeah, the Michigan players are ticked off because they just lost. And the Wisconsin players are ticked off because they just saw one of their assistant coaches be assaulted by Juwan Howard. And so now, so now you've got this situation. Just a, what an ugly scene, black mark on... Men's college basketball, um, Big Ten's got to get this sorted out sooner than later. We shouldn't be dragging this into Monday afternoon, Monday evening without an official statement and determination on punishments there. But Juwan Howard will not be coaching in Michigan's next game. I don't think I don't think he's coaching for a minimum of two games and even a two game suspension would be, would be way too light. Uh, if you told me that he was not coaching again until the Big Ten tournament, I would absolutely believe it because you just can't have that. And it's a horrible look for his university and for him. All right. If I miss anything from the fight that you haven't chimed in yet, please do. But lastly here, uh, we did talk about Michigan and the fallout from their loss in terms of resume, in terms of the basketball stuff. What about Wisconsin? And we heard, of course, uh, Greg Hart talking about Johnny Davis, of course, but the Badgers moving forward. What do we think about what position they've set themselves in, both in conference and big picture for the tournament? Certainly. Let's just shift focus to Wisconsin here and what they get the win. They were they were, you know, one of the top 16 teams. when we saw the bracket reveal happen on on Saturday afternoon on CBS. Getting this win keeps Wisconsin not just in a really good position going forward for its NCAA tournament seating. But the Badgers, if you bring up Wisconsin's schedule uh, of all the other teams that are in competition to get, you know, finish atop the league ledger in the Big Ten. Wisconsin, this, Wisconsin's got the most, you know, na a schedule that's easy to navigate. This is Michigan here. I want to note the next four Michigan games are at home and then they're at Ohio State. 
I don't think Howard's going to be there for Rutgers. I don't think he'll be there for Illinois. I'm going to say right now, I don't think he's coaching the Michigan State game either. I think it's a minimum three-game suspension um, going forward. Wisconsin specifically with the Badger schedule, they've got home against Michigan at uh, – uh, they've got at Minnesota after this home game against Michigan. They're at Rutgers, home to Purdue, home to Nebraska. So when you look at the other teams – like Ohio State, Michigan State, Illinois, Purdue, that are trying to get that one seed in the Big Ten, finish atop the league ledger. Wisconsin actually sets up best for this at this point. Um, that, again, that's going to get overshadowed and everything that happens at the end of this game, which was it was just an okay game, and then Wisconsin pulls away, blows out. Now we've got this disaster that happens in the handshake line. But in terms of pure basketball and what the result means, it actually is a good thing for Wisconsin's program. Uh, the Badgers were not expected to be anything better than maybe like maybe a 9, 10, 11 seed back in the preseason going into the NCAA tournament. Now, Wisconsin's got a real chance at being the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament with an easy schedule going forward. And with that, it's not unthinkable since Wisconsin has the second most quad one wins in the nation. Like Wisconsin still has a chance at a number two seed when we get to March. So that's the basketball angle of what we saw today in addition to the transcendent uh, ugly scene that we saw in the handshake line. All right, Matt Norlander, appreciate you jumping on, breaking it down, and of course, uh, anticipate you and Gary Parrish talking about that on the College Basketball Podcast. Again, it's the fallout there at the very end with both head coaches, assistant coaches, and players in Wisconsin's double-digit win over Michigan on CBS. Make sure you download and follow both Gary and Matt on that front. Again, uh, Matt talking about the Michigan fall. They were already going to be in trouble with this loss in terms of their tournament prospects but now could be without key players but would be without Juwan Howard for what Matt thinks will be multiple games two probably even three and then on the flip side having Wisconsin with a, a big win for them as they continue their trek in conference and towards March. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.